Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful spring morning here in the deserts of Arizona. So I was really hoping to head north and go to Sedona this morning and photograph the snow. Unfortunately, it just did not get cold enough. They got a lot of rain like we did, but just didn't get any snow. So I got to sleep in a little bit today. So while I'm home here on this unexpected downtime, I am focusing on improving my photographic skills. So today, we're gonna to learn how to do photo stacking. This is not the best morning for photography here in Phoenix. I generally love getting out into the desert after a good rain, but I'm a bit concerned that we will just have too much cloud cover to capture an interesting landscape. I'm not too upset though. I mean, considering that I'm supposed to be in Japan right now, I needed to go out and go for a good walk anyhow. Well, normally when I'm out this time in the morning, I'm trying to capture a brilliant sunrise. And we certainly had clouds, but we had too many clouds. It was way too overcast, didn't get any brilliant color here. I can see the mountains on the south side of the valley are getting some very dramatic lighting, but they're way too far away for us to take advantage of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the desert here. And to do photo stacking, I need to find myself an interesting foreground element and an interesting background element. So we're gonna walk around here and uh, see what this place has to offer. So I found something that's gonna work for this photo stacking exercise. There is a small plant sitting right here in the middle of the road. That's it, is I mean flowers. It's really nothing significant, but I think it's gonna work great for this. I'm gonna shoot down this road where I have a lot of wildflowers on each side, and then way out in the distance, I have a small group of mountains. Now, this is a perfect setup for photo stacking because I want the entire thing in focus, but I can't do that in a single shot. Let me show you. Take your thumb, hold it out, close one eye. Focus on your thumb, but notice the background is all blurry. Then focus on the background, look at your thumb, but keeping the background in focus, your thumb is not in focus. The same thing happens with your camera. As you focus on an element up close, your depth of field here that's within focus is very small. As you focus farther away, it gets even larger. But the problem is if I focus on those mountains, my elements, my foreground elements gonna be here. If I focus on my foreground element, the mountains are back there. So none of it will be in focus in a single shot. With photo stacking, I'm gonna take about three to four different images, and then in post-production, I'm gonna stack them so their focused elements are what we see, and the unfocused elements are gonna be filtered out. So let's get this shot set up. Just getting things leveled here. There we go. All right, so right now I'm focused in on the actual plant itself. And if I zoom in here a little bit, I'm gonna be able to see that this plant is now in focus. Now the problem is if I look up to another part of the image, it is clearly uh, blurred out and we can't see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus out into the distance. And even though the immediate wildflowers on the left are in focus, 
out there on that mountain it's still out of focus and if we zoom back if we go back down here to our plant it's out of focus that's the problem looks like this is going to be a four shot uh, photo stacking um, yeah because I've got the plant here I need to focus a little bit beyond the plants so I make sure I get its back leaves I need to focus on some of the plants in the mid ground and then focus in on the foreground so let's do this you need to make sure your camera is in manual mode. We need to maintain absolute control of the exposure and focus while taking these images. This also includes the white balance. Be patient and carefully select the focal distance for each of your exposures. Because this is a process that needs to be completed in post-processing, you want to make sure you get it right in the field. Now one of the reasons why you need really great software to do this is because not only do you have to stack the images, you have to align them. So I'm going to show you a quick little video I just took with the camera and I want you to focus down in the lower left hand corner of the image. What's happened is, is I'm focusing from the, the most closest focal distance to its maximum distance. And as I go back and forth, you're going to see the image breathe. It literally will change the focal length of the lens. Even if this is going to be a, a primary lens one doesn't have zoom on it it's still going to happen so make sure that you use the proper software to align all of your images in post-processing you're good go ahead morning thank you not a problem have a great one you too hey everybody welcome to we'll call my outdoor studio i am enjoying probably one of the last really beautiful mornings we're going to have here in phoenix for months to come that's why i'm working outside so start to get a little bird or car nose going by here so i've got lightroom opened up right now and here in lightroom i have the four images that i took for us to try and photo stack now you might have noticed as i cycled through those they are getting a little darker even though i had complete control over my exposure the clouds were moving so the light was changing we're going to have to uh, we're gonna have to work with this I'll show you how so I'm gonna go ahead and select the first image in this uh, in this series and this is where I'm gonna do all of my photo corrections too so let's take a look here now just zooming in I can see the plant was razor sharp that's what we wanted but remember as we go into the background it does get um, blurry and that's the problem we have to deal with now something, these clouds, there's not a lot of detail up in the clouds, so I'm going to go ahead and apply a luminous mass to them. Line this up, move it up here. We're going to switch this over to a luminous mask. Make sure we only take the bright elements because we want to work with the clouds. And what I'm interested in doing is just bringing the glow a little too much trying to bring down some of the exposure a little bit here so you're trying to get some more of the detail in those clouds we have very little texture in those clouds so very hard for us to get anything we'll try some there we go the contrast seems to be working I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in real quick just to make sure I didn't give us any bad grain all right, looks good there, so I'm going to say done, and I can see we do need to make a few adjustments to this image. For example, remove the chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections, and that took care of some of the distortion and the extra color in there. So again, this is where you're going to be doing a, all of your corrections. Now, I need to move these corrections across to all the images. So. I'm going to go ahead and select all four of those images and tell it to sync. And we're going to tell it to synchronize. There we go. Now the next thing we need to worry about is the difference in the exposure. So again, here's one and two. Not that much difference at all between the exposures, but when we get to the third and then finally the fourth yeah there is a difference in exposure so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and increase the overall exposure of this image just a little bit and see if we can get it to match the first image so I'm just going to go ahead and say let's go to point five here and now I'm going to compare it to the first 
And the first one looks like it's just a tad bit brighter. We're going to go to a 0.6 on this. And then compare it. And that's real close. Okay, so for this third image that was a little darker, since I went 0.6 on the darker image, I'm going to go 0.3 here. And see if that was enough. Oops, a little too far. Let's try that again here. Here's the first image. And then here is the third. And we need to go just a little bit more, so we're going to go 0.4 on that one. And then that is real close. We're going to go ahead and take it. Next, we're going to select all four of these images, and we are going to develop them inside of Photoshop. We're going to open as layers. Let's go ahead and select all the layers here in Photoshop. We're going to go under Edit, Auto Align Layers, and I'm going to tell it to line up. Now, this is going to deal with that breathing of the images, of the focus, when we are changing different focus focal lengths. So it's going to try and align as many of these elements up together. Now, because the images will have some different sizes to them, we are going to have to crop the uh, final image. So let's take a quick look here. We're going to zoom in tight, and you can see that there is some uh, cropping that needs to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and tell this thing to crop. The image for me. And let's go ahead and do that. So move this guy in just a little. And then on the opposite corner of the image, I'm going to make sure it all crops in correctly. There we go. And we are done. All right, the image has been cropped. Let's take a look. Now, when we're zoomed out, you won't be able to see anything, but that does take care of issues with the fringes of the image. All right, so we need to figure out which image has the um, images, has the layers, the focused in layers. So I'm going to take a look here, and we're here. This top image clearly, clearly appears to have the plant in focus. I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of these disappear and we can see that it gets blurrier and blurrier as we get along. If I go back up here, the mountains are in focus as I start bringing those other images on top. We can see that what is in the distance is getting blurry. So, that first image is the one that we're going to start off with. So with the first image selected, I'm going to go ahead and provide it a layer mask. Now, when it's white, that means this image is opaque. You can see it, but if we paint it black, then it's going to disappear in the image behind it. The layer behind it is going to be exposed. So I'm going to go ahead and get my brush tool. And I'm going to give it a fairly decent size right now. And also we'll do about 50% softness on it. Yeah, we definitely want bigger because of the size of this image. So, oh, way too big. Let's zoom in here and see what happens when we use this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And what I can see here is that right now where the plant is at, it's nice and sharp, but it's going to start to get a little bit blurry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. And I know it's hard to see right now. Whoop, went too, too far there. I'm going to go ahead and paint. And where I'm painting, it's removing the foreground uh, image and it's replaced our foreground layer in the layer immediately behind it, which is much sharper. That is what's being shown. So let's go ahead and finish out this painting. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out here. And because I know everything above it needs to go, I'm going to use a much larger brush just so we can get this done. There we go. And I'm seeing an issue with my auto align uh, images of my cropping not quite working. So we're going to run through a crop at the end of this just one more time to make sure we've got it. All right, next up, now that we have that, I'm going to click on the layer underneath it. I'm going to go ahead and give it its own layer mask. And now I have to go back into the image and discover what elements are getting blurry so I can erase them away. 
and it looks like in this area here is where we're going to have some issues so I'm going to go ahead and brush those looks like the ground could use a little sharpening there and you can see this is where we have to make sure the exposures are pretty much lined up this is just going to be a little bit off but for demonstration purposes I'm not going to go back and readjust the exposures all right now pretty much everything above this is going to be in the distance so what we can do then is use a larger brush and finish it off there we go all right and then finally we're going to get the most distant layer going or showing so I'm going to click on the third layer I'm going to go ahead and give it a layer mask and we're going to repeat the process so let's try this cactus here and there we're going to paint the mountains we're going to basically paint everything that's pat that's past this first hill that we're on and maybe a little bit of those background flowers there we go I'm going to make sure I get those mountains And then with that, we'll zoom out and we're going to use the bigger brush and finish off the distant area, the clouds. Ooh. All right, and with that, we now have our image. But because the breathing, the outer line didn't quite do is what do what I wanted to do, I am going to go ahead and do one more cropping of this image. So I'm going to start up here one corner, just drag it down into the area that we want to preserve. I'm going to run to the other corner. And I can see down here it's fine, so it looks like the problem is going to be up here. And let's just do a check in the other corner. All right, looks like we're good now. All right, now that everything looks like there, we've got the cropping done, we're gonna go ahead and save it over, over to Lightroom. I'm gonna do Control W and say yes, we're gonna make a new file for it, and we're going to allow it to go over to Lightroom. All right, here we are in Lightroom. It's already highlighted for us the image that we just worked on, the one we ported, imported back from Photoshop. I'm just gonna press three, give it three stars, just to kind of mark it. Sometimes I'll also use the color labels so I can mark which ones I've been working with. But anyhow, if we zoom in on this one, I can see the plant is in focus, those rocks are in focus, the flowers are in focus, and the distant mountains are in focus. Now from here, we can continue editing the image in Lightroom uh, to uh, do whatever effects we want, make any final adjustments before we create the final product. To be honest, this is not gonna become a favorite image of mine. However, with all those pebbles and flowers, it is a real good image to study on how to do photo stacking. I'll continue to add more photo stacked images into my stock photography portfolio, and I'll be sharing the more interesting ones with you all in a future episode. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me out here. This is what photography is all about for me to get out here, explore this world, and capture these moments. Now, over the next few weeks that I'm home, I am going to be sharing with you some of my techniques on how to take better images. I'm also going to be demonstrating how to get those images on sale. I've had uh, members of our community ask me to demonstrate my workflow. It takes a lot of work to go from camera to putting them on sale, and I've been doing this for a lot of years. So my workflow is pretty refined. It's a little weird, but it works. So uh, stay tuned make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get to watch those episodes where I show you how I most effectively get my content online to be sold. I am going to go get myself some breakfast, plan my next trip so I can continue exploring. All of you have a great day.